Hey, get up! Get up! Get out! Get out! Get out! Get over here! Get on the ground! Get on the ground! All the way down! Hands behind your back right now! This video is a challenge to put my skills as an escapologist to an extreme test. I've done an underwater blindfolded straitjacket escape, handcuff escape with a snake slithering across my feet, and more. To succeed in this video, I will need to be prepared and apply all the escape skills I have previously learned. Here's how it's going to work. This is my brother Jonathan. He just got contracted with the Air Force last year. This is my uncle Kevin. He's been in the United States Air Force and the Air National Guard for a total of 16 years. The original idea for this escape challenge was for them to have a suitcase full of objects with which to restrain me. This would include a straitjacket, 100 feet of rope, duct tape, and handcuffs. They could use any or all of these objects to restrain me to a chair, and then I would have to escape. At the last minute, we added the element of being kidnapped. I revealed my schedule to my brother and uncle so they would know when and where I was at all times. I gave them free reign to kidnap me at any point of any day. I would then be taken to a location and restrained with the before mentioned objects. I could only use what I had on me at the time of the kidnapping to escape. Therefore, I would need to be prepared at all times. What? All right, and I feel like I'm being too nice, even giving you this much. But my one piece of advice is to be prepared always, at all times, no matter what you're doing or where you are or what's happening around you, regardless. From, from now on. From now until... You need until to tell me when this is happening so ever. I don't shoot you. <laughs> <laughs> to stay prepared at all times, I wanted to make sure I had a few specific things. Number one, paper clips. I could use these to pick handcuffs if need be. Number two, bobby pins. I use these to pick double locking handcuffs. Number three, a razor blade, in case I need to cut through duct tape or other restraints. I decided against just leaving these objects in my pocket. I was afraid I would forget them if I changed clothes or my kidnappers would find them if they searched even a little bit. I decided to use a bandage to hold certain objects on my body underneath my clothes. Uh, I did not, <laughs> I did, I'm not even making this up, I did not sleep well last night. I felt like I woke up every two minutes because I was kind of worried about them coming in and also the patch, the the secret place where I'm keeping my tools or whatever, I had to take that off because it was hurting so bad. When I took it off, there were like indentations and red marks on my skin. So this morning I had, and so I was, so I was worried about them coming in and me not being able to have that on me. I put them right next to my bed on here so I could grab them if I needed them, um, if, if I heard them come in and I had time to grab them. But I was kind of worried about that, so I kept waking up. So this morning, I had to redo it um, so it wouldn't hurt as bad. I wrapped the bobby pins and the paper clips in the tape as well, and I wrapped all of it in like um, a tissue so it, it would feel better, and then I put all of that back on. So I have it on right now. So it's 0600, and I'm in the car driving to McDonald's to get some breakfast for myself and my aunt and uncle, Kevin and Nicole, with handcuffs, rope, straight jacket, uh, body armor, and various other sundry things in the back seat. Pretty visible, actually, and some GoPros. So we've been planning this for a few days now, probably about a week maybe. We've got the plan exactly laid out, exactly how it's supposed to go down, whether or not it actually works or not, We'll have to see, but Andrew has been extremely on guard all week long waiting for this moment, but we're trying to do it uh, early enough that he's either still asleep or just woken up, and we're doing it right after our mom has left so that when we're coming in or pulling to the driveway, he's less suspicious of the noise since she will also be going through the doors and getting into her car. We have body armor, masks with skull faces on them because why not? We have uh, gloves. I'm wearing a dark hoodie with tactical pants and a like a leg holster. I'm not sure what he's expecting us to be coming in like, but how we are going to be coming in is with speed, aggression, violence, screaming and yelling, throwing him on the ground, putting a bag over his head, handcuffing him, looking like some sort of hired mercenary paramilitary team. Um, taking him to his execution. All right, it is now 0633. We're back on the road. Got a big bag of food and some water. And uh, 
Sounds kind of weird, but uh, an excitement about kidnapping my brother. Let's do it. Look at that sunrise. It's a beautiful day for a kidnapping, boys. We are all GoPro'd up, and we've got all of our gear, so throwing the bag over his head. We've got handcuffs. We've got the plan worked out. We're gonna be throwing him into the trunk of this car and um, whisk him away. And that's, that's as bad as simple as it gets. Ding dong, Andrew. We're coming. Hey, get up, get up, get out, get out, get out, get out, get over here, get on the ground, get on the ground, all the way down, hands behind your back right now. You're in for the worst day of your life. All right, stand up, stand up, let's go. In the trunk on the way to the location, I decided to go ahead and retrieve my tools and put them in my pocket so I could more easily access them once we arrived and I was restrained. My first objective is to remove the straight jacket so I can have my hands and arms free to start working on the rest of the restraints. While my kidnappers were tying the rope around me, under the cover of the bag, I actually secretly already performed the first step of escaping, getting the arm strap up and over my head. I did this because I was afraid the rope would bind my arms too close to my chest and I wouldn't have enough room to get my arm over my head. Thankfully, I was smart enough to go ahead and do this. Now I have to get my arm out of the straight jacket sleeve. Once I have freed myself from all restraints, I will grab the keys on the back wall, get in their car, and leave. I have 30 minutes to do this, or they come back, and I lose.
On a straight jacket, there is a strap that goes in between the wearer's legs to secure the jacket to that person's body. My kidnappers ran this strap in between my legs, but also ran and secured it extraordinarily tight underneath the bottom of the chair, making it extremely difficult to get to and undo from my current position and virtually securing me to the chair. I tried undoing it from the back with no luck. I also tried throwing the main strap to my other hand at the front of the chair to hopefully undo it from there, also with no luck. Pressing my forearm against the chair with such force at that angle was somewhat painful and left bruising a few days later. I had to find another way to reach that strap. Now that I had the rope and straight jacket out of the way, I needed to retrieve my hidden tools so I could pick the handcuffs.
Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. It was a fun video to be a part of, um, hopefully entertaining for you guys. It was an idea that I came up with, but I want to thank the guys and gal who made it possible. My Uncle Kevin and my brother Jonathan, my kidnappers. I was the kidnappy, they were the kidnappers. They took this video and made it something that was way awesomer than I expected, so I want to give a huge thank you to them and make sure to thank them in the comments. Also, thank my Aunt Nicole for helping film and produce the video. I could not, done it, I could not have done it without these guys. I really appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, and carpe diem, wita es bona. Go have a- Go, oh, go, no. go, go!